Boy, this snake is bright. Wow. That thing. Yeah, it's incredible. This is the best time for me to do uh, reveals is when they're in the egg because then you get my genuine reaction, my first time seeing it. In the past, I've done uh, some videos where I talked about cutting eggs a little bit, and I talked about how I usually will cut around day 55 or so. Um, on the internet over the years, I've seen people all over the board, with some people cutting as early as 35, 40 days, 45 days. What we don't hear a lot about are what the potential downsides to that are. Um, you have a situation where people cut and they show babies and you know, on pictures, they all looks okay, it looks kind of cool in the egg. Oftentimes you see some eggs that are really, really, really cut really roughly. But what you usually don't hear is when things go bad because those same people um, who posted that they cut eggs, they don't want to talk about necessarily the results of that if it was not positive. You know, that's, that's an embarrassing situation. Um, so I want to take a little bit of the stigma off that today. I want to talk personally about my experience with cutting eggs, some of the negatives that have resulted from the years so that you can understand what's at stake and you can make a decision going forward about how you're going to do it. So over the years, I've cut all over the board, okay? Um, the earliest I've ever cut was actually just seven days into incubation, and it was a complete accident. Um, I was cutting, a, I was trying to cut some a clutches, um, a couple clutches one night, and I pulled the wrong tub, literally, and I thought I was pulling a clutch that was about to hatch, and I was actually pulling a clutch that had just laid, just about. And so I actually cut into the clutch a little bit, saw that basically I was looking at an embryo, saw that I was looking at something that's complete unformed and just freaked you know i realized i'd made a huge mistake amazingly that egg still hatched it's incredible how amazing resilient these eggs are but let me talk about some of the situations that can arise so the main thing is is that people cut eggs because they want the experience of seeing what they've got in advance and i completely understand it it's the same reason that people shake a present under the christmas tree ahead of Christmas Day, right? Or they'll open the stocking the night before because it's a kind of a fun prequel to the actual event of hatching. And I totally get that. I feel the exact same feelings that you guys feel and that's why I've done it over the years as well. Um, however, the other side of that is once you've cut, no matter how early it is, okay, you usually cannot really see if what you want to see. Okay, so unless you're talking about an albino versus a normal or a piebald versus a normal, a lot of times when you cut that egg, especially if you're being careful, and you're cutting it early and you're being careful with how much cut you make, you're looking at a tiny little sliver of the snake. A lot of times it'll be belly up. And if you've cut very early, sometimes you won't even be able to see the color really coming in yet. And so a lot of times you're not even really sure what you're looking at, which means that you're gonna have to keep checking it, right? And so every day after that, you're gonna be pulling up in the incubator, looking, pulling up that little tab, opening up the egg, seeing what you see, you may not be able to see anything yet. Oh, you really don't know what combo hit. It's hard to be able to identify some of these genes, some of these combos, even after they've hatched. Imagine trying to ID a snake in the egg when you're seeing just a tiny little sliver of pattern. So what you end up doing is you end up messing with the egg a lot. And if you're talking about a couple days before it hatches, um, you're gonna be looking at it four, five, six times, maybe even, prior to it coming out on its own. Um, if you're talking about it hatch, um, cutting it 10 days prior to it hatching, you know, I know I've been in situations where I've checked an egg 25, 30, 40 times just because I was so excited about seeing what was coming out, so excited about it was, trying to figure out what it was, and that was super fun. Unfortunately, there has been a, t a few times that I have had babies die in the egg um, from being wrapped in their umbilical cord. And I truly believe that it's because of me checking it over and over has made them wiggle around in the egg a little bit, wrap themselves. They'll, they're moving a lot more when you mess with them than they would if they were just being left alone in a static environment. Um, pretty much cord wrapping is one of the most common reasons that baby ball pythons die in the egg. And if you're cutting the egg and you're looking inside it and messing with the egg a lot, that percentage of the chance that it will cord wrap goes up dramatically. Um, and so that is one of the number one reasons never to cut eggs. Um, 
So the proponents of cutting eggs say, well, the, re the re big reason that everybody throws out there is, you know, this baby might drown in the egg. It's sometimes, it's rare, that maybe they won't be able to cut their way out of the egg. Um, I have found that to actually be true. Um, that is very, very, very rare though. Um, on a percentage that I believe is far less than any gain you're getting by cutting the eggs, because you're also endangering them by cutting them as well. But in this video, in a little bit, I'm going to show you, actually I'm going to show you right now, an example of actual footage of babies that tried to cut their way out of the egg, but were un unable to. It's a video I took about two years ago, and I've had it happen in two clutches, in all the years I've been doing this, two clutches where babies tried to get out of the egg, but could not, and died in the egg. It's something I rarely see, and I wanted to share it with, with you guys. Um, what we have here is this is a uh, Mojave GHI clutch that just hatched. Uh, we have these are babies that I let pip on their own completely. Um, normally, it seems like in the ball python world, everybody thinks that you have to pip um, them or cut the eggs for them. Um, but these I let do on their own. I'm I have my new policy is is that I let at least one of them pip, um, and then I cut the rest of the clutch. Just just a little notch on the top so they can come out um, in case there's any trouble. So what happened on these is I didn't do anything on these. I just, these three hatched completely. These two, um, nothing happened. They didn't come out at all. So these three are the ones who came out. So what happened is this morning I came in, uh, I was gone yesterday, I wasn't around to look at these, and these are, this one is dead in the egg. This is the first one. But if you look here, we have a whole bunch of scratches on the top. Where, right there, where it tried to cut its way out yesterday. Um, or, or the day before, or whenever it tried. Before dying. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of talk about sometimes about, oh, hey, how they can't make it out of the egg. Almost nobody ever actually sees this because... Um, most people cut, and um, this is one of the sad realities that sometimes they they can't make it out of the egg for whatever reason. Maybe the best balance is to let them start coming out, you know, heads, and then just cut little notches so they have a place to come out um, in case they can't on their own. I'm going to put the camera down for a second and cut this egg, and we'll see if they find a similar situation in there or not. First thing I notice is, see how there's no vein structure, you know, across the above the snake or you know on top of the egg here um, that shows me the snake was moving around in there and to, you know tore that those veins up with its head as it was trying to cut its way out we have the exact same scratches here on the top the real long one there short ones for some reason and I don't know the reason it wasn't able to cut its way out um, and so unfortunately this snake died where it could have lived if I had cut this egg yesterday um, if I had been here so this is the kind of unfortunate reality. I hate to show dead snakes on a camera, and uh, but I hope that uh, this is an instructional video. Again, I, I, I'm not okay with people just you know slicing and dicing their eggs you know ten days before they're supposed to hatch. On the other hand, this is the other side of the coin. I think personally, a happy medium is let them start. A few of them start on the clutch that way you know they're ready. Make a little cut so that they they can put their heads out in case there is any trouble. This is pretty unusual. I don't I don't want anybody to think this is going to happen commonly. This is okay. So that footage, I'm actually really lucky that I found it. I had recorded it years ago, and I've actually had lost the original footage, and I just found it last week, which gave me the idea we really got to do this video. We hear a lot about the, about the possibility of of this happening, but this is an actual example in video footage, and to me, it's really really interesting to be able to see that. Um, okay, so as a reward for listening to all my ranting and raving about cutting eggs, we have two clutches that we're going to reward you guys with and something very, I've been very excited about. Two clutches that are hatching, we already have heads out, and we're going to cut a few of the eggs that have not had, had their heads out. We're going to find out how the odds ended up. Can't wait. Let's enjoy this together. Woohoo! Okay, so this is the first clutch. This is awesome. Um, so it is a yellow-bellied dreamsicle to a female lavender het pied. 
He bred her three times, she laid on three nine, and today is, what is it, five eight? Yeah, so it's been basically 59 days. Um, maybe not 59, I guess you have to count the 31 days in March, I think it is, yeah. Okay, anyhow, so we, so it's 58 days basically. But this morning we had three different heads out, so we're gonna take a look and see what we have. They're gonna yank their heads back in as soon as I start messing with this. Oh, we have more than three heads out. Well, no, three, four, okay, five. Well, I'm learning to count. Okay, so the cool thing is about this clutch is that odds should be great. Um, because it's dream sickle to a lavender het pied, um, fully, you know, one the odds should be one and two, so half of these should be dream sickles. Now, they're, because lavender is in both the dad and the mom, they're going to be um, all lavenders. So any pieds in the clutch will be dream sickles. That's kind of a cool, cool way to look at it. And of the dream sickles, half of them should be yellow belly dream sickles, which are really amazing, way brighter. We just actually just hatched a clutch of them a week ago, and we may just do a little clip of them too because they're incredible. They're starting to shed. Um, yellow belly dream sickles is, yellow belly seems to be the, the one um, snake that really improves the dream sickle. They're, okay, so let's see what we have. We'll start with the ones that are already pipped and we'll just cut a little window to take a look at them. So the big thing on the ones that are already pipped is the only real risk you have involved at this point is if you cut such a large window that they feel really uncomfortable or you jostle them too much, they could go ahead and try to flee the egg, kind of leave the egg even though they're not ready. So that's the concern, and the trick is I just don't mess with them too much, really. I just take a look. That is a fantastic yellow belly dream sickle on the first egg. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, you can see, you're probably wondering how I can tell. Um, okay, we see a saddle here. It's obviously lavender. It's obviously a pied. But see how jagged the edges of the saddle are? All the white noise, kind of the speckling in the pattern, that is basically the same as you'd see on a yellow belly pied only reversed, so it's white on a dream sickle. Um, so it adds a really, really cool aspect to those saddles, makes it look really neat. All right, so, wow, this is a is really, really great color on this animal, really great. Since we got a yellow belly dream sickle so quick in this clutch, and just for the length of the video, I'm going to cut the rest of it, and we're gonna fast forward it on the videos so that we can get some good content without making it way too long. Alright guys, so this is really exciting. This is a um, pairing was a spot nose clown female, which is actually the very first spot nose clown ever produced. It was made by Ben Rennick. Um, we bought that female from him right after it, you know, pretty much right after it hatched. We're really excited to get her. And this is the second clutch she's given me now. She's been fantastic. This year we bred her to an Orange Dream Fire Yellow Belly Het Clown. So really excited to see where the uh, results of this are. Um, okay, so this is, the clutch has already started hashing, so we're gonna go ahead and cut the rest of them and see what we have a little bit. Um, but we've waited for the, for the first head to come out, and it's kind of cool just seeing that kind of 
lone head sticking out of seemingly nowhere. It's a it's a head, basically a head with an egg attached. It's kind of kind of funny to watch. But uh, just based on this first head, it looks to me like it's a uh, fire um, OD spot nose, um, possible yellow belly, you know, head clown. So that's exciting. Hopefully, you get some visual of that. Uh, but we'll start with this one since he's already head out. I'm just going to take, and he's got a little cut there that he made. Sorry, he's got a little cut there he or she made before choosing that one. So we're just going to go off of that and free up that head. He can't pull his head back in right now just because he's stuck behind. There he goes. Awesome. So we're just going to take and put a nice little hole here all the way around. Nice ring. Boy, this snake is bright. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. This is the best time for me to do uh, reveals is when they're in the egg because then you get my genuine reaction, my first time seeing it. Look at that, it's got a little bit of a ringer there too, right here at the tail, a little bit of a ringer coming up. But just the intensity of that. All right, so you see how when I cut that, there were no veins inside the lining of the egg whatsoever. There were no veins to go through. This is definitely yellow belly too. Look at that thing, that flame. So cool. So yeah, completely, he'd already absorbed the majority of the veins. What happens is before they even cut through the, um, the egg, they're already absorbing, starting the absor absorption process. Look at that, wow. Um, the absorption process a few days in advance. So that's definitely fire OD, yellow belly, spot nose, head clown, and just crazy. The only thing that could possibly really top that, hard to believe, would be a visual version of that. Um, but we'll see what we got here. So I'm going to do the same thing. Now on this one, um, it's probably already, because because the other one's already coming out, it's probably already absorbing. We're going to take and just kind of cut along the inside here. All right. Whoa. Dude. <laughs> Dude. That thing. Okay. All right, guys. That was crazy. Can't believe how crazy amazing that animal was and it really came as a surprise because I mean the odds and yeah so we cut the video though because it was so good that we thought we can't just stick it at the end of a morphs 101 here we got to have its own video its own dedicated video so we're gonna let it shed out and we'll do the full cutting video and the unveil of that animal and it was amazing it's amazing yeah I can't wait to see it come out um, so about egg cutting though I just want to go back to that is the end, the takeaway is that we want the very, very, very best for the animals, and that trumps what we enjoy, that trumps looking at the early to see what we got. That's all fun, but in the end, JKR, we feel like the best method is to cut once they've already started to pip. That way you know that you're not going to have a very long wait, and there's the least chance of a complication. But the cool thing I think that you got to see from this video is you have a chance to see what are some of the complications of cutting, not just hearsay, but what can go wrong even when you're trying to do it perfect? Um, and so we get to look at all sides of it a little bit. This is how we do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, let us know in the comments. If you can't wait to see that video, that egg, that snake that was in the egg there at the end, tell us in the comments. We'll get the video up soon, I promise.